Uh, Ramana, I hope uh, I'm testing a new stuff. Uh, I'm broadcasting on all three channels. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit of a challenging. Um, uh, you need to bear with me a little bit. Um, I still... Um, I'm uh, learning these new technologies. <laughs> That's a very complicated technologies we have. This is a, uh, yeah, yeah, I told you this is a, uh, there's nothing goes smooth <laughs> in technology. That's why I created a, a called Entropy. Yeah, entropy is, um, uh, Technical debt actually is creates a technical debt. So in one minute live, it's going to go. We are alive. So it's going to start in uh, four more minutes. Um, but um, it's a new attempt uh, from my side. <laughs> you know, is uh, going through uh, challenging situations here, but I. I'm pulling through. <laughs> it's all your prayers, I think. <laughs> uh, so, to you know, it is um, we need to have a multi multi kind of skills nowadays because if you are good in doc being a doctor, that's not enough. We are good being a scientist is not enough. You have to know how to communicate. First thing, second thing is you have to know how to do use videos, edit videos. These are all the future ideas that uh, um, is going to be the future, future of um, uh, technology, future of things. So everybody from anywhere in the world, they could be potentially powerful people. They can, they can express their voices, you know, that, uh, that's, you know, that, that is a good part about it, you know, so. Uh, so it is going to be a little bit rough. I'm going to share with you a screen. Uh, if anything goes wrong, you bear with me, guys. Please help me out. <laughs> I really um, need a help in this direction. I hope sometimes I can see what I what you see, but sometimes I don't know what I what I see. But uh, I hope you see my screen. Uh, so can you hear me? So it's going to start in two minutes. Um, you know, this thing is driving me nuts a little bit. I don't know why, but uh, it is a... Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. That's all I could say, say that. It is... Uh, I am sharing my entire screen. Yeah. I'm going to start in one minute. And it is a challenging for me. Please bear with me. And uh, it's technology. So, so gone those days, you know, you talk and go on stage and talking because of Zoom took over, <laughs> you know. So we have to be ready for the new kind of technologies. You can do from home what you do on the stage. That's a great thing about the technology. And also, same thing, it brings a lot of complexities to with it. But it gives the power to real people, real smart people. That's, uh, that's my feeling, you know, that, that they can express better and uh, life will be much more, much more um, interesting. Can you imagine somebody from 
a remote part of the world, giving a, a new ideas, new concepts, how to, how to solve the problems. Um, that is going to be fantastic, right? Um, I hope um, my phone dead. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Let us start it, okay? Hey, uh, good morning, India. If, they, if you are in India, good good afternoon in, in some other places in England. And uh, almost going to bedtime in the United States in the in the East Coast and West Coast is that I want to go to dinner, going to eat dinner. But, um, you know, this is my attempt to broadcast my interesting um, ideas that um, uh, I wrote a book. It's called Science is Not a Subject. Science must be a lifestyle. The reason is I did that is the science is so complicated, uh, make it complicated at least. So we need to, you know, uh, bring it down to the common level, a common platform, you know, medical term terminology is written in Latin. A lot of people don't understand it, you know, so uh, I think it's one of the maybe evil ideas that the knowledge kept be, should be kept around as some people. <laughs> Do you know this? Uh, Buddha was a, Buddha was a Italian evangelist for that times. He was translating Hinduism into into all the languages he speaks, uh, you know, regular language than Sanskrit, Hindu original language. But that's the reason they were uh, they were upset, the Hindus upset, and they literally kicked out the Buddhism from India because of that reason. So he, th he thinks that he's diluting the Hindu knowledge, Hindu sacred religion to everybody. But I'm on the Buddha side, you know, I think knowledge should be belong to the democracy. Democracy works in knowledge, you know. I, I believe it is the best one to it is the best way to do it. But anyway, uh, this book uh, in this book I wrote about uh, India's Nobel Prize winners. I'm from India, so I'm a little biased. Sorry, but I did a um, a lot of other scientists around the world. But this is the one uh, for Sunday. I thought it's a good topic to talk about it. So we don't even know what they did. Most of the people, you know, within outside of their subjects, they don't know what Indian Nobel Prize winners did. So I, um, I thought about it, right? You know, understand whatever I, whatever I can understand it, even if it's not my field, um, you know, I try to do that. I have a master's in physics and I did a, um, I did not complete, but I, I did attend a lot of classes in nuclear engineering and, um, and the computer science, you know, so, so I have a broad background and I spent uh, almost 30 years in the healthcare industry you know, from uh, providing the diagnostic services to all the way to physician recruitment, diagnostic services, and uh, designing the workflows for the radiology and cardiology. So I have extensive experience in that area. But anyway, let us talk about the, the topic today is uh, India's Nobel Prize winners. You know, India is a center of civilization, center of education for a long time. Um, but before, yeah, but before I do, I want to shout out, shout out to Dr. Matthias. Matthias uh, today uh, is a chief medical officer for GE, General Electric. I uh, gave a compliment to my article. Um, so he declared it today with his, uh, along with his uh, rad tech, is a rad tech day. So I congratulate him. That is a really, uh, they are most uh, under, uh, one of those um, rad techs are the most underappreciated uh, people in, among the healthcare professionals. So I think uh, thanks, uh, thank you, Dr. Matthias. Uh, really, it is uh, appreciated. Uh, I, I have written an article about Mary Curie, so so they that was he complimented on that. Thank you so much, and uh, it is an uh, honor to have you. Um, uh, then I wanted to bring uh, several people in in the f in the future broadcast. I want to bring uh, different people from different parts of the world, and and bring a different perspective on healthcare problems and uh, in the overall science itself. Okay, let us talk about Nobel Prize. India is a center of civilization for a long time, but you know, we don't have too many Nobel Prize winners. Strangely, you know, why? Because the basic research was, you know, like 20 years ago or 30 years ago, we left the basic research. Uh, then we went into this uh, whistles and buzzles of uh, technology. But basic research is the fundamental backbone of any country. You know, if you want to be really in the forefront, that's why Russia and America 
are always in the forefront of that kind of things. Their basic research is solid. But anyway, the, we have four people, four, five people to celebrate uh, the Nobel Prize winners. Um, I'm going to give you first one, Nobel Prize winner, Venki Ramakrishnan, Venkat, Venkatan, Venkat Ramakrishnan, I think I have my, my middle name is Venkat. Is, so I'm not going to talk about Wikipedia stuff. I want to go straight into what, uh, what, he, what they did. Um, is, um, uh, is a, is got a Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2009. But he, is a, he did a PhD and master's in physics and PhD in physics. He is a physics graduate like me. So uh, he is a fellow physics alumni. So I, I, I really appreciate that. Physics people have a little bias towards physics people. I think physics is the mother of all sciences. <laughs> you know? So uh, that's a bias is there. But he's born in Chidambaram, Tamil Nadu. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we hear a lot about mRNA vaccines mRNA vaccines, what they is mRNA is a messenger RNA, is RNA, DNA are the two parts of the our constituents of uh, uh, genetic language. So RNA is the actually life generator. It, it, it creates life actually. So messenger RNA takes the information from a messenger RNA, carries the information, genetic information to the ribosome, a, a cellular particle ribosome. It made up of itself is the RNA and the proteins. But this cellular particle, what it does is, so mRNA takes to the information to the uh, to the uh, cellular particle ribosome. Ribosome reads all the information and produces the protein in synthesizer. It produces the proteins. That's what what Venti Ramakrishnan did. We didn't know until recently the structure of the ribosome. Uh, we don't know the where the exactly the structure means where the atoms are: carbon, all hydrogen atoms, oxygen. All of the atoms are, we don't know where the locations of those atoms are in the structure. I mean, understand, you know, is a, is a quantum inside, is the location is a funny thing, but it is a basically prob high, prob high probability locations that they're talking about. So, so what you uh, use the X-ray crystallography and neutron diffraction, X-ray crystallography, what they do is they take a vivo, uh, a sample of a cell a cell and then freeze it into the soil so cold, coldest temperature it becomes a crystal then you can go through the um, you, you put a x-rays or lasers or whatever you do x-rays for example here in this case uh, to get the information about that that structure itself so that's why how they find out where the so it's a it's not that straightforward it's much more complicated that's why you won the nobel prize uh he, by the way he was uh, he, his father his mother went to I went to McGill in Canada, where I went to McGill in uh, Concordia University. Uh, so his father was uh, probably, you know, you know, his father, his mother knows my family members. Some of the up in Montreal used to be. Um, but anyway, that uh, Venki Ramakrishnan uh, won the Nobel Prize for this. So he made a, a tremendous uh, contribution to the mRNA in the future vaccines because if you understand the ribosome RNA, how they read it. How it reads and synthesizes the proteins. Ribosome is like a superhero of the of the body, you know. So, so that's what um, what he discovered the structure of the ribosome. They call him that's why ribosome reader. Okay. So, so the next one I'm going to talk about. Um, the the next one is from India. His name is Aragobind Kurano. Kurano. He is a Punjabi gentleman, uh, he's from, uh, he, he, he was born in uh, British India in the Pakistan side, West Punjab, uh, in a Raipur place, you know, that's a very Indian name, but it is on the West Punjab side, uh, that's now it's a part of Pakistan, um, before India's, you know, split between the Pakistan and India. He won the Nobel Prize in 1968, you know, the, he won the Nobel Prize for the oligonucleotides, what he did was he first synthesized the, the, um, the genes in the lab. He is the first one. They call him father of chemical biology. So he first synthesized um, the parts of RNA in the in the lab. So that's called oligonucleotides. So now, without that, there was no way we could they could have invented the vaccine for sorry you can invented the medicine. A vaccine for our corona coronavirus, his contributions are tremendous. You know, in that sense, is uh, 
is a most underrated but nobody even indians don't know a lot of indians about his uh, contributions he was the first he won the nobel prize in medicine um venki ramakrishnan supposed to be in medicine but he, they awarded him in chemistry um but uh, the for aragobind karano is used um, um got the nobel prize in medicine actually he is a phd in biochemistry and all those things but he is not uh, it's not a doctor but uh, they are using an, a crispr a crispr is a gene editing tool uh, gene editing tool is or nowadays is getting very popular so you can repair a genetic diseases through gene editing it almost you can do from the from your back from the garage almost so people are buying uh, these uh, crispr kits uh, to change the dogs and the dogs composition and all those things but it's kind of scary you know how it's going to turn into a lot of medical ethics are involved and we have to be careful about that and um, so the oclo nucleotide the first time synthesize synthesize the the dna rna uh, the strands so that's a, that is a humongous breakthrough in the in the in the medicine in fact so now you can produce so many you can order on on amazon actually you can order this uh, dna synthesis uh, synthetic dna from any place nowadays so Venki Ramakrishnan probably did a god benefit from uh, Aragobind Karano. Uh, so my daughter is calling. <laughs> um, uh, I think I'm maybe I messed up my broadcast. You know, I don't know. You know, so she will. She wants me. Hey, Lena, I'm in the middle of the broadcast. Can I go there or can you see me? Lena? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry about that. My daughter wants to make sure that uh, I'm not doing anything wrong. The next one is uh, CB Raman. Uh, sorry, the next one is CB Raman. Um, um, I'm going in chronological order. CB Raman discovery is a mind blowing in fact he is the discovery is everywhere every aspect of science engineering medicine name it theology uh, he was almost pervading in every aspect omni present in every field CB Raman CB Raman is 19 he was a his father was a professor in my college in my university on the university uh, but uh, Uh, but in 1930 he discovered a called a raman spect- raman spectroscopy raman spectro spe- uh, raman scattering is called what is a scattering is a raman scattering is when you is it... yeah lena <laughs> uh, i hope i am not a... hello lena I'm in the middle of the broadcast. Okay, congratulations. I'm happy for you. She got engagement rings, ladies and gentlemen, my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations. You say hello to Eri. Thanks. Why? It's a good day. My daughter got the you know, engagement ring. I'm paying off sick to the public entire world. <laughs> But anyway, um happy day for uh, for her. We wish her all the best. Uh, she she is in California. She is in San Francisco. She is a data analyst for a company. Um, she used to work for CNN. But anyway, let us move on to the Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy is a really fantastic um, invention in my view. So, if you wanted, if you suppose you right now, if you want to know how do you, um, uh, if 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 I see an apple, can you without cutting it, without smelling it, is it rotten or not? Can you tell? there is no way you can tell any other way other than a raman spectroscopy you know that's very interesting right uh, the raman spectroscopy is the only way you can sm- you can without touching it you can tell something is rotten or not so what it is that you know the, when light falls on uh, the reason i you could able to see me or you could say able to see your family members or anybody that because the light falls on them and reflects back to their eyes and then that's what they most of the reflection 
you know, 99.9999 percent is a reflected, reflected, it reflects back from when people see it. But some parts of a small, small light interacts with the cells in our body. And then they give a, if you then interact and then emit the lower version of that, that, that is they emit a different kind of a photon, different frequency. So that, that, that is a, you catch it through the uh, spectral analysis, vibrational and rotational spectrums, you can catch and analyze the cells. So if I, if I take a picture of somebody walking by, and then I can, by analyzing the spectral analysis of the vibrational rotational spectrum, if they have a cancer or not, it's scary, but it is very useful, right? Um, so that is a, that is what he invented. Um, so in the future, I'm pretty sure you could go to walk into the any pharmacy and then you see that uh, somebody take a picture and then can tell you you have a cancer or not. That easy is going to be such, at least uh, certain cancers. Um, that's going to be the future, in fact. So the reason was he was not a popular in, in the beginning when he was alive uh, because in the medicine in the medical field. Uh, the reason was that the scattering that comes from the bodies is not that strong. So that's why they did not pay attention to it. Uh, that, that was a big problem, in fact. So what he did was, now we have the lasers, we have ultraviolet rays, and we have different kind of things we could use it and then get the better information about uh, reflected material, reflected scattering, Raman scattering. A particular scattering is a rotational vibrational spectrum. You can read it from there. So with that, you can check chemical composition, how the functioning of the my vivo, my, the, the living particles of the living cells, how they're functioning. So you can compare the normal cell library with the uh, with the rotational spectrum of the reflected material, reflected uh, spectrum. Then compare and see how deviate, what kind of a deviation it is there. And you say if it is not a normal or not, you will know immediately. So not only that, you know, that's right now Raman spectroscopy they use in the <coughs> sorry uh, in the on the labs or like um, the Vanderbilt and Stanford and other uh, universities use it to counter the counter the 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 the, uh, the surgical procedure because when they see cancer spreads you can give a gold nanoparticles to injection gold nanoparticles and the bio is of you know bio um, uh, function is that it atta it attaches to the um, particles the cellular cells uh, they said the gold nanoparticles. Then you can put, push a light on the, the shed a light on it, and then it reflects it back, and you will know exactly where the each cell. The, there is no way any cell can hide from this uh, this uh, this procedure. So you could hunt and 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 uh, you know with a precision you can hunt it and then you remove it from the. So that is the greatest tool for the surgeons, uh, particularly when you are doing a cancer surgeries. So then diagnostic imaging said that is one of the 10 times more powerful than in the medicine, uh, you know, to, to for any diagnostic imaging is better than any any PET CT scan or anything that you think it is uh, 10 times more powerful if all that comes in the picture soon. So I think, you know, it is a fantastic uh, uh, invention by the discovery by Raman. Raman, he won the Nobel Prize in 1930. He got awarded, uh, he got united by Queen of England, sir, along with Venki Ramakrishnan, uh, both of them got sir, you know, is, is knighted by Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Um, so the, the thing is that um, the C. V. Raman, uh, now they're looking for life in Mars, um, that, that uh, um, they're looking for life in Mars. So uh, through, the, through, the, um, uh, through the Raman spectroscopy, because you can you can easily find out the any life biological life is there easy to find out through Raman spectroscopy right now Perseverance rover uh, rover carries the Raman spectroscopy spectrometer to find out um, to the to the the life in the life on Mars so it is a then the most interesting thing Raman spectroscopy is easy to restore the uh, restore the church's uh, architecture. You know, there were no pictures, you know, there is a church in the Cantabrian mountains in Spain. Uh, they, in the, see, in the 13th century, they, they, that, that church was, uh, you know, because of the rituals, it is uh, degraded into, um, so it didn't know the original architecture, original colors, 
what kind of architecture they have, what kind of colors they have. They didn't know. So only way you can find out to restore, to restore the original format is through the Raman spectroscopy. So it, gives, it goes through the atomic structure, uh, you know, that the vibrational rotation spectrum and find out the original, the original uh, colors of the, of the architecture. So that's they restored back. So not only one church, several churches were restored through the Raman spectroscopy. Even even though he's a Hindu, he, did a, he saved a lot of churches through <laughs> saved a lot of churches. So that's his uh, that's his contribution. Raman spectroscopy is a uh, is uh, is uh, everywhere. Then his nephew, the last the nephew was um, um, the nephew was uh, his name is. Um, uh, Chandrasekhar Subramanian, uh, he was born in Lahore, Pakistan, <laughs> again, <laughs> even though he's from South Tamil Nadu, his parents are from Tamil Nadu, he was a, on a diplomat mission in British India, he was born there, and then eventually he spent some time in England, and then moved to Canada, and then eventually uh, moved to moved to States, you know, in the University of Chile, he became a professor in the University of Chicago. What he, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1983, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, discovery of the Chandrasekhar limit, it's called. So when the when the when the gravity and what Einstein according to Einstein, when the gravity uh, when the when the massive objects when their gravity becomes huge, like a 1.44 solar masses, it cannot sustain the gravity. Pulls it back to the center, and it becomes a, it pulls it back all the way to the to the then then it it. Um, it it, just, it follows the supernovae and then becomes a black hole, um, so or neutron star. So the 1.44 solar masses is the limit you got to have to before it becomes a black hole. So that's a limit. His name is a name of named after him. It's called Chandrasekhar limit. Chandrasekhar limit. So he was um, the black holes are very strange objects. It's uh, even though you know when uh, Einstein was uh, through his equations, the forms of the black holes can exist. He, he did not believe himself. His own equations, the output, the outcome of his own equations, he did not believe the black holes. Black holes are mystic objects, even though they're sim the science is very simpler, you know, very extremely simpler. But the the function of it and the mystery behind it is extremely complicated. And, you know, it's very uh, integrating, in fact. You know, suppose you, uh, uh, you know, where um, <clears throat> if you're somebody is falling on the, for example, I give you some black hole tidbit. If somebody is falling on the black hole, is a black hole complementarity principle. They can at the and the event erosion. That's a way that you cannot come back from that erosion. So, so that's once you pass that. Once you, that's no, no way I know that you exist or not. You know, everything about you is gone. Uh, so, but the new way of new physics says that before in the event erosion, you will there is a fire fire walls they burn you into the ashes. So, so you can literally see if you are an observer, probably you could see the ashes and pick it up. You know, in um, hypothetical, but it is uh, uh, giving you thought. But the strange part is that you are. For you as a person, you don't feel anything. You continue to go inside the black hole without any knowing anything. So, which is true, is that you're alive or dead. It is that is a complementarity. You know, you're both alive and dead. So that is the funny thing about the black hole physics. Just I want to give you an interesting point, but uh, but you do all your own research on that one. So what that black holes, Chandrasekhar is a very important part of the black holes. Uh, so everybody, so Chandrasekhar, uh, X-ray, NASA gave one of the, so, you know, the way we find the objects in the universe are uh, through the, through the telescopes, right, the, the, through the different mechanisms. Uh, this is electromagnetic spectrum. So, when you, you know, you see a star through visible light, so with the eyes can catch visible lights. But ultraviolet rays, infrared rays, in between, you cannot catch microwaves, you cannot catch radio waves. So you have to have a different uh, detectors for that. So one of the detectors is X-ray observatory. Some of these stars, some of the near black holes, they emit X-rays actually. So so those X-rays you can catch through 
uh, Chandra, the observatory, X-ray observatory, named after him, his name, X-ray observatory. If you see a movie called uh, uh, 20, 20, 2010 or 2000, is a, it came in 1900, 1950 or 70s. It is a popular movie. It's it's all about a very classic uh, sci-fi movie. In the in that movie, and there is a computer in the spaceship. There was a computer. It named it named it Chandra. He calls it Chandra. So they named after he. In fact, they put his name there. You know. So so he's very the the name the observatory X-ray observatory named after him Chandra Chandra Observatory. That's a black hole picture you can see. So there is another one. Then the that is a uh, Dr. Ronald Ross. Um, he was he was born in Almor Uttarakhand. He is a British in origin, but he was born in India. In the uh, he won the Nobel Prize in 1902. Uh, he was he was all over India. You know his parents are uh, from India. Uh, he was born in India. He won he worked for the Indian Medical Services. In fact, he was an employee of the Indian Medical Services. Uh, so he started his research was mosquito. The, the, the malaria transmission is the first one to recognize the malaria malaria transmission through mosquitoes and the, among the birds in fact uh, the so he won the Nobel Prize for that you know people don't know uh, I consider him as Indian because he he spent most of his life in India in Sikandrabad Hyderabad and he was in Calcutta he was in Assam uh, even his drawings are in, uh, now a museum kind of a small museum in the displayed in the tea hospital in Assam, you know. So if you go there, these uh, get sense, sense of riches. So they won the Nobel Prize. So there are several nominees. I want to tell you one important person, they ignore the Nobel Prize continuously. You would have got the four Nobel Prizes that is Allah Pregnant Subaraw. I will talk with him about it in a later letter about him. His contributions are tremendous. Uh, that was a pure in discriminatory aspects of by the, during the time he was a truly innovator and he deserved he was not even i don't know whether he was even nominated for the uh, for the nobel prize it is sad you know i'll talk about him in the, some other uh, broadcast but here the important important people that i want to talk about is the um the 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 next uh, um the nominees the the known very well known nominees in in all my subjects at this time, I'm talking about Nobel Prize winners in science and medicine, not about poetry. Ravindranath, Ravindranath Tagore won the uh, Nobel Prize in the poetry, but I'm not talking about um, the economics. I didn't talk about anything. I did talk only in science and medicine. That's uh, that's only. So that's uh, where I focus was my the book itself. Science is not a subject. Science must be a lifestyle. Is focus of science and medicine. So. See, in Sachinanda Bose, he, through his uh, very interesting phenomenon, he did this he status. He invented a new kind of mathematics called Bo statistics. It's called Bose Einstein statistics. Funny way. Um, statistics is that what he found out if you flip, a, you know, if you, by mistake, if you take, you took a, a coin in both head and tail, or both two heads of the same coin as it's two heads by mistake, he ended up in a different kind of results. That results he was talking about, you know, that uh, it produced the um, um, a new new kind of phenomena. He produced it. That is so. He, when he found out this discovery, it's a uh, what the discovery is. When you have a gas particle, gas particle, gas molecules, or the photons, or even any thing, in when they get together, they become a, they lose their identity and they act like a one one, one system. Uh, one quantum system, for example, all the photons get together, acts like a not individual photons, individual photons, they act like a more of a, a one quantum, singular quantum system. Like you see in the football, uh, football or cricket stadium, they do waving, people wave it. Uh, the waving is look like a wall, one synchronizer waving, right? So they all look like even though there are individual human beings, they all synchronize the waving. That's what the, what the effect is. You see the effect of quantum effect. That that kind of a wave that that is the effect you get in the, in the in the quantum system. That is discovery was a phenomenal in the in the in the science and uh, uh, his publication was rejected several times. So what he did was he sent his publication to uh, to Albert Einstein. 
and all was understand likely. So he put he tagged his just put his name, he lent his name. Basically, he added a little bit more about the photons and he did something definitely. Uh, Albert Einstein is a legendary man, legend, legendary scientist. He was already famous by then by then. So so what he did was he did uh he did the um uh, um the the Higgs so the the particles or the the one of the results is um that that resulted in um, the Bose Einstein statistics is called is a two is a different kind of kind of branch of mathematics uh that um uh, then there was a material the the phenomena resulted in the physical aspect of that is Bose Einstein condensate is a very peculiar matter uh you know you there are four known st states of matter, right? That's a liquid, gas, uh, the the liquid, gas, solid, and plasma. And the fifth one um, is Bose-Einstein condensate. That is a strange name, but it is what the fifth state of matter is a strange, peculiar, or peculiar matter. See, it, it behaves very strange. When you so the way the the phenomena was that this state of matter exists in theoretically that you uh, you. With his mathematics, he proved there exists a matter that is a fifth state of matter. Uh, after his passing, after 75 years after passing in the University of Denver, Colorado, uh, what they did was they invented the actually Bose Einstein condensate. All three of them, uh, Catterall and uh, three other scientists in the Denver, they won the Nobel Prize for that. They first time they came up with a Bose Einstein condensate matter. So they produced the Bose Einstein condensate. It has a Tremendous applications. Still, we are in the beginning stages of that applications. Both Einstein condensate. Uh, they use in the International Space Station to study about uh, endothelium functions. You know, endothelium is a skin wrapped around. It's like a wrap. It's around all the entire body. It's a is a largest organ. If people don't know that, it's the largest organ in the body is the endothelium. Uh, but the endothelium functions are mysterious a little bit. It has its own brain, you know, in a sense. So the one will study, but because of the gravity, endothelium cells get flattened out. You cannot, you cannot, so they, they you know, you can't see them in three dimensional structure. So the only way in the zero gravity situation, you can, you can study in the, in the, in the International Space Station through Bose Einstein condensate. They, they mess in the Bose Einstein condensate. They can do that. They can read that. So his contributions are tremendous. He was nominated several times, but he did not win. He deserved Higgs boson, God's particle. They say recently you know, uh, they found out the one of the standard model of particles, Higgs boson. Boson is named after him. The bos bosons are a uh, integer spin, a particular particles. You know, bosons and fermions are two classifications of particles. Uh, bosons are they are like they can. Uh, stay in the all of the together, and they, they can coexist in the same state, like a puppy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like a, uh, the the the, but the but the but the but the fermions are like a cat. They, you know, they stay cats. If they don't like each other, they don't like each other. So that's a police exclusion principle. Says that when you fall from a tree, the the people the, 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 when you get hurt, the the pain is not from the gravity. It is actually electromagnetic. The in Pauli's exclusion principle: the electrons in our in a in the in the in your body violently repelling because they cannot be in the same state. Fermions don't allow two electrons in, to be in the same state, so they violently repel, and that's what it causes the pain. You know, so it is electromagnetic radiation is causing the pain. That is a um, that was the invention of the Bose Einstein Bose. That's a uh, named as a bosons. So his name was given by Paul Dirac, another legendary scientist, gave a, a name for uh, bo bosons, which which are the particles that 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 they coexist in the same state. Now, the next one, Jagdish Chandra Bose, I, when I was a kid, I was reading about him, uh, studying, reading about, studying about him. And he's a polymath. You know, in the polymaths are people who know several subjects. Botany, chemistry, astronomy, astrology, all kinds of things. We don't have any more, unfortunately. Uh, he was born in Bangladesh, in birthplace is Bangladesh, but he is a British Indi Indian uh, in British India. Um, he was inventor, he, he was recognizing, 
you recognize the first time the plants can uh, transmit electrical signals. That's what the invention was. Um, then he was he did a, quite a bit of contributions to the Wi-Fi and uh, wireless communications, radio radio communications. But he did not win the Nobel Prize. Uh, but uh, he was nominated. And then he met the, actually the guy who invented the wi uh, radio wireless communication is a is a Marconi from Italy. He met him in you know in person. So David Chandra Bose is a very legendary figure in the in the science of medicine in India. Then the next one, again, Ramachandran, is uh, is from Kerala, uh, in Kerala. Um, protein folding is a complex folding. You know, when you uh, he, he did a lot of uh, protein folding, he did that. Uh, uh, it's a complicated uh, protein folding is uh, one of the most the challenging aspects. It Google said that they solved it recently. I'm not sure. Protein folding is is uh, exponential numbers. It turns the the when I, I give you an analogy. When your wife uh, drops the jewel, jewel, jewelry in the jewelry box, so you take a necklace and drop it in the jewelry box, the, 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 the pattern it falls in. If you want to get the same pattern exactly, you know how long it takes? You, human mind cannot grasp. It may take a billion years, still you will not reach off the way to the, to the exact pattern. Because we are, our minds are not uh, you know, made for that kind of a, uh, huge numbers. So, so protein folding is a complex one, you know, so we, people have been trying protein folding for a long time. Uh, actually, spike proteins is one of the challenging things, the spike proteins. So without the Ramanujan, another gentleman, another uh, from Tamil Nadu invented this mathematics, Ramanujan, some I'll talk about them in the future podcast. But they, they, protein folding is a, very vital to discovering all the problems in the uh, the vaccines and other things. So he is a is a is a he did a, quite a bit of contributions in the protein folding. The next is E. C. George Sudarshan. Sudarshan. <clears throat> Sudarshan is uh, that is a is in the United States. He's an Austin. You know, teaches physics there. Uh, still alive, I think he's one of the few people alive. One of the one of two people. Most of the people, uh, you know. Um, so, but anyway, is a. Uh, Palam, I don't know Palam, Kerala, I don't know where it is exactly. But um, uh, it's a phantom particle called tachyon. It's like, a, you know, when Einstein came up with the quantum entanglement, two particles can uh, affect each other even a billion miles away from each other. It's like two twins feeling each other even if they are two different continents. Similar thing in physics they found is quantum entanglement. Uh, they, they affect each other. So. But the, there is no communication between them. There is no way they can communicate billion miles instantly. But the, the, the effect on each other is instant. So then some people believed that there is a particle called tachyon, which goes faster than speed of light, which is speed of light is the limit. You cannot go faster than speed of light, but that there are some scientists who believe in it. Tachyons can go faster than speed of light. So he was the first guy, they gave a hypothesis on the on the on the um, on the on the tachyons. Okay, so if I get a brain freeze, I'll let you know. <laughs> so, so the tachyons are still is a very controversial, but it is it is one of the important ones people study. The next one is Megan. You did not Megan Saha. Is the next one is also in Calcutta. Calcutta. Calcutta is a producer of several eminent scientists because it was the capital of Britain, England. So that's a British India. It was a capital. So there's a lot of people came. He's from Dhaka. Um, he was in spectral analysis because if you want to learn about it, you know the uh, spectral analysis. If you get the light from the stars, you can through the spectrum mass spectroscopy. You can you can. Uh, you can you can decide what kind of a uh, materials that star has with a spectral analysis. You can sit down in in your home and then you can design. You can say that what kind of a uh, chemical composition all the uh, the stars have. That is a powerful uh, analysis. But uh, he did not win. He was nominated. Then you see now Rao. He's from Bangalore. Um, he's a uh, 
you know the he was in his invention is a two liquid nitrogen and the he was the contributions for uh, he did not invent all of them but he made a tremendous contributions for the invention of uh, liquid nitrogen and the carbon nanotubes liquid ni nitrogen is now cryogenic uh, all the cryogenics use liquid nitrogen you know um, <laughs> you know uh, say to my friends my friends uh, i have a i used to own a, i used to run an imaging center in downtown atlanta and, and uh, you know there, there was a there was a next door the sperm bank used to be there the people come before they go to war they come and store their sperm and liquid nitrogen they used to store in the liquid nitrogen tanks you know <laughs> next door, next door was interesting that uh, so you can store the liquid nitrogen thousand years you can have babies after thousand years you know that's a, uh, that is a strange about the uh, for the you know sea monkeys for example you can put in the liquid nitrogen and bring it back after thousand years they're dead and then you put a water on it and they, they come alive you know so they are eternal in that sense so uh, he did a contribution to the liquid nitrogen carbon nanotubes uh, carbon nanotubes are you know there they one time and this is a elon musk kind of idea they want to build a elevator to the space a real elevator so through carbon nanotubes you can sit down there the elevator goes all the way to carbon nanotubes are thin the most strongest material it, it is a, almost the atom, atomic thin size actually so it is a strongest material you can grab the graphene uh, it made through graphene so that was the idea you can build through the idea was real actually a lot of people pursued that you know to build a, a shaft uh, to all the way to the all some people said that to the moon in fact <laughs> to the so that is a that's a carbon nanotubes the next one is the next one is upendranath brahmachari um is um uh, is a skin disease that uh, the 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 the, I don't know much about this disease, the dermal diseases that in India, particularly in the tropical areas, it comes there. Uh, somebody mentioned to me, I, I'm not familiar with this name itself, you know, but that, that's a very quiet. He, she did a contribution. She's the only woman from India. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, she's not the one. Sorry, he's not the guy. He's the guy. Turn uh, so he is the, he contributed in the medicine, but uh, he was nominated for the medicine, Nobel Prize for medicine. He did not win. But he was uh, nominated. T. R. Seshadri is a uh, another gentleman um, that uh, he is from uh, Tamil Nadu again. Um, Tamil Nadu produced a stalwarts of the of the, the intelligent people from India. Um, he got the highest civilian award, Padma Bhushan. Bhushan. Um, the heart, he, he invented some of the oxygen heterocyclics. They're all congested heart failure. They use it still. They use it. He did a lot of work in the plant chemistry, um, but uh, but uh, him his contributions are more of administrative side. He was my former, not not my professor, but my you know my previous uh, my senior much much senior colleagues professor uh, in department of chemistry in Andhra University. So he spent a lot of his time in Andhra University in my 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 own university. Uh, so so he was nominated. Then the next one is Asima Chatterjee. Uh, she is, um, you know, that um, she did a uh, birthplace in Calcutta again. You know that uh, she's the only woman in the in among all the nominees or winners uh, from India. Uh, we need more actually. Um, she did a lot of uh, work on the alkaloids and morphine and quinine. These are the these are the cocaine used to be used as a pain drug in the in the in the past. These are the drugs that uh, used for the painkillers basically you know so she made a lot of contributions there and uh, um, somebody can give us some more information about it the next is homi baba uh, there was a real, there was an atomic research center in india they if you want uh, nuclear nuclear medicine material isotopes you have to uh, in india you have to go through a baba atomic research institute research center what they call it is a near bombay mumbai it is uh, located near Mumbai. So his, uh, his, his contributions is a cosmic rays. These are the cosmic rays coming from mysterious places sometimes, I think. But it's actually from the feathers and, and the coming from uh, the near the black holes. It's, the, the kind of uh, cosmic rays or origins are still kind of mysterious. 
but when they come is interactions in the in the with the with the earth atmosphere that was that was a uh, earth atmosphere um, that what he found it so for, for example muons is the, one of the particles uh, that you know the einstein's relativity was the time dilation was practically examined practically validated through the muons uh, through the particle muons so it's a, so india named after him named after the bark is named after him baba adamant research center i got a job there but i did not take it so these are the these are the people that uh, i think uh, so what i did was uh, i wanted to create science and medicine awareness so oh yeah one more thing is uh, yeah, i want to tell you i will be talking about definitely about the alapaka supra uh, his contributions to the medicine is tremendous he is from harvard but uh, uh, will uh, it itself is a own topic I'll talk about it. Um, so, but anyway, I produce. Uh, we uh, we want to popularize these people. The contributions. The, these without these people would not have been uh, would not have been any way closer to the um, what we are today. Basic research is a fundamental thing. It's important. India should must allocate resources to the basic research. Technology come and go because technology can accelerately just. Uh, Murphy's law. It can, if you whatever you are using now, it can be invalidated within five to ten years. But science is a fundamental science. Is, it cannot go. See all these scientists, what they did, discover. Still, we are using today. We are using a different technology, sophisticated tools with the technology, but the science is solid. So uh, we produce the T-shirts and the coffee cups, and you can go to the website medbricks.com. You can buy a book. I've written a book on it. And then you can you can uh, buy a um, uh, buy a coffee mug or t-shirt or appreciate anything that support this kind of a uh, our history. You know that then people really you don't know which one you get insp you inspire them. Your children, real children, or somebody from a village, you can inspire if you give a t-shirt like this, or if you give a if you give a coffee mug, or if you give a if you give a some kind of a thing. To me. Uh, placing on them and then give it to them is, is just a very great gift. You can have it. You can give it to your friends, colleagues, children. It is a truly inspirational. As a, it, you know, so so India contributed several. That's why we have a uh, shastras in India's Vedas. They have extensive knowledge in the in the medicine, science. Um, you know, so we cannot ignore all these people with their contributions. We have to remind us. The best uh, Raman spectroscopy. We, how many people we know that Raman spectroscopy is, is being used in right now at present in Mars? Because that's that's a lack of uh, not knowing India, being an Indian, not knowing that is kind of a uh, sad. You know, I think we should we should uh, really you know inspire next generation of Indians uh, and then present you know ourselves to promote these materials. So buy uh, if you can appreciate if you buy. Uh, the the these um, these materials you can have pillows you can have a tea, coffee cups and tea cups uh, from my website it's called daily wear for medicine you can go directly there or you can you daily wear for medicine dot com you can buy on Amazon Etsy Amazon you can buy on we are available on all of them okay thank you so much I don't know whether I can see the questions or not but I'm doing my best and. Uh, uh, you know, it is a, uh, it is a uh, interesting. I this is a uh, if anything te technically goes wrong, anything went wrong, uh, I I would uh, ask your forgiveness. <laughs> That's all I can say. But uh, you know, I hope you all uh, participate in this. Uh, every day I want to do something. Uh, this is my contribution to life. It makes sense. It's not. We are. We became. You know, more and more we became selfish in the sense that, you know, we have to, we have to really, uh, it's not what is the drum, self drums, how much I did for myself, how much we do for others, how much of this, without those uh, scientists, what we, what we are, we could not be here at this time. So, so that, that is a keep in mind, that is what the selfless service of the scientists created the present India, modern India. So we need to promote it. And uh, thank you so much uh, for joining with me. 
I'm, uh, I'm super excited about this broadcast, and I'm do I will do my best. Join with me, please. Open the contributions and criticisms. I'm completely open to it. There's a, this is an informal discussion in the night time in India, in the United States. It's kind of a talk about just general subjects, but it is a. I hope it is inspiring you in a certain way. Thank you so much. Bye.